Greetings, humans and fellow fairy creatures. Back to another Radiata Stories Japanese version. Where we last left off, we had just kicked Gawain's butt. Um, we did take over Fort Valencia after much, many trials and tribulations. And uh, next, next we're going to Algandar's castle. But don't tell Zane that, because he told us not to go there. Um... What... What else is there to say about today's stream? I think we're just going to do Algonar's Castle and, and some of the side missions and stuff. And if we have time you know, grinding and, and stuff like that, but I don't want to much more story progression beyond like Algonar's Castle, the uh, the uh, ore mission, and uh, what else is that? Do we do the Orcus Nego- not the Orcus Negotiations one yet. There's another one. There's another mission that I want to complete after this. But we'll just stick to the three missions today and uh, see where we go from there. How... How has everyone's week been? I know it's Friday, and I very seldom stream on a Friday because most of the time I'm working on Friday. But uh, it's nice to get a Friday off. I do have to work tomorrow and Sunday too. So, you know. your week was good. That's good. I'm trying to remember what I did this week. I. I know I worked a metal show on Tuesday. Um, yeah, pretty much just work. Not a whole lot that's interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, that's pretty much it. What do you guys say? Should we get into Radia stories? Just jump right in. I think we could. But I do have to select the proper ROM, because the last one that I was playing was the... was the prototype, but we're playing the Japanese version. Catherine, how are you? Is the game loud enough for you guys? I feel like it's really, really quiet. Let me let me just adjust the volume a bit. Turn it up. Just a little. Is it okay now? Oh, it's fine for you. Maybe it's just particularly quiet for me. Um, this is where we are. The rest is sure. Once we get into a battle, it's gonna, it's gonna be super loud. And we've got Romari in our party, so you know it's gonna be a doozy. Okay, yeah, I, th I got, um, our dad left me a voicemail, and I, I listened to it, but, um, I didn't fully process it. I don't know if that makes sense. I've had a very, like, the last couple of days my brain has just been, in, like, in sort of, like, a mind fog. <sighs> so, uh, maybe I'm just not getting enough sunlight or something. But yeah, I'll, um, I know next weekend I'm working pretty much every day, but um, I think it, it, usually in the morning I'm available. Why is that? I don't know, sometimes I just get in weird moods. Maybe it's like, well I haven't been taking my iron um, supplements lately, so maybe maybe that's also why. Coming out on Thursday. Yeah, I'm working Thursday. F Let's see. 
I'm working Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sunday is like a longer day because it's a 3 to 11. But, um, like, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are like, you know, a 5 o'clock start, so I don't have to go in as early. on Sunday yeah Sunday I let's see I start at 3 I usually leave for work around like 1 30 if I'm working at if I'm working at 3 and we've got Mikey in our party go all the way down to Algonar's Castle. I think it's in Algonar's Castle where we get the uh, demon mail. And um, to be honest, I'm probably, I mean, like, I'll, I'll, I'll get it, but I, I don't know if I'm really going to bother wearing it. And I know this is going to be probably an, un an unpopular opinion, but I really don't like that armor. I mean, I think it, it does provide some good defense. You want to fight me, Alicia? It provides good defense, I think, but it also depletes your HP. Which, for me, isn't worth it. And also, it hides your face. So you don't get to see Jack's goofy expressions in the cutscenes. Oh, easy there, Dennis. And it's the menace. Maria. Oh, now they're waking up. Thank you, Romaria. Oh, I forgot. Romaria only heals one person at a time. We don't have, uh... We don't have Miranda who will heal everybody in the party. Oh well. If we had Zane in our party, which we can't, he can heal everybody. He's an all he's a all inclusive healer. We never use the demon mail. I'll like put on the demon mail for like maybe one battle. And then I'll promptly take it off. Like, yeah, fuck this armor. Here, we're Ridley. Okay, well, it's it's okay. She's dead now. Oh, I got a book of some sort. Tell me what that is, Google Lens. I feel like I'm gonna have to be using a lot of like Google Translate and Google Lens this summer. Oh, Pegasus book. Um, Cause Devin and I are going to uh, Ottawa. Hi Nina. We're going to Ottawa. And but uh, to get there, we're okay. Good, she's you and Ridley by herself. We have to pass through Quebec. We're stopping. We're stop. We're stopping for lunch. Meet up with one of my friends who lives in Montreal. And I've never been to Quebec, so I don't know. How screwed I'm gonna be if I don't know how to speak French. I took one semester of it in college and that's about the limits of my understanding of the language. It'll probably be fine. I mean my my friend is fluent in both English and French. But I don't 
I'm worried we're gonna get, like, get to the restaurant and I'll try to order in broken French and the server's gonna be like, no, you're not speaking good enough French. They left a note. Isn't that kind of par for the course for UPS? Like, don't they always sort of just leave a note instead of actually deliver the package in your area? I mean, I guess for a laptop, I, it's probably better that they don't leave it at your doorstep. But I also get the frustration. Devin, why don't you tell us about the laptop that you're getting? It's, it's what, the same laptop that I have? Not the one that I'm playing on, this isn't a laptop, this is a desktop, but... Devin wants to get it, um, a laptop that... That's a gaming laptop that he can at least play some of the games, that's the Steam games that he owns. With ease. Cause, uh... I already opened that one. He's got... He's got a couple of games that his friends insist will run well enough on a standard laptop where it still is like super, super slow. You actually just don't even bother with the note. Ugh, that's, that's still annoying. Uh, before I got this gaming PC, um, and I tried to stream games on like a regular standard laptop, it was such a nightmare. I don't even know how I did it back then. Like Variety Isle Stories was so laggy. It was it was not even funny. I just don't want to bother stopping. Delivery drivers who don't deliver. Speaking of, of um, emulating games on like a faster computer, I was talking to Devin earlier today about how I was thinking of giving Okami another shot because the last time that I played Okami, um, I played it on my old laptop and it was really, really slow. a lot of patience. It was playable, but it was just, it, it took patience. Oh, I heard my Volti! Yeah! Fucking finally. Can't wait for Army of Shadows. Um, yeah, definitely took a lot of patience. But now that I have a much more powerful machine, I can... Maybe give Okami another shot. The thing is, is I'll probably have to start a new playthrough because it's been so many years since I last streamed that game that I'm gonna forget. I'm gonna forget where I left off, and I'm sure you guys forgot where I left off too. And I don't want to have to bother trying to boot up my old laptop to get the save data from the old one onto the new one. So I think it's the, the simplest solution just to start a new one, a new file. Because it was a good game. It's just... The hardware that I was working with at the time was not ideal for emulating and streaming. On the topic of the, the laptop that you're getting, Devin, and I know I told you this, but, um... I mean, it's, it's a pretty good laptop, and it, um... It has a pretty easy time running Radia Stories, which is kind of historically a kind of laggy 
Did he want an emulator if you don't have a desk computer? I can even play the uh, the prototype, which is a very demanding a de very demanding file. It does lag a little bit on my laptop, but it's not unplayable. Um, leave Ridley alone. The only thing that I don't like about my laptop, which isn't going to be a problem for you necessarily, Devin, because you don't stream, is that for certain games, like like Radio Stories or Final Fantasy X or pretty much any sort of powerful PlayStation 2 game, is uh, you can play the game just fine by itself, but if you're playing the game and streaming at the same time, it, it does struggle a bit. It's fine if I'm playing, you know, a Game Boy game or you know, something smaller. A Game Boy game, a DS game. But it struggles with PlayStation 2. Of course, anything will be better than your old one. And that's the goal, is just to have something that's better than the one you had before. That is Septum Cave, I don't want to go in there. I remember when I was looking for a new laptop. Like when I got when I got my first laptop, I really didn't have any sort of basis for comparison to like know what it, what I like and what I don't like in, in a computer. But after you have your first laptop or your first car or something or your first phone or first anything, you start to learn like I like this feature, but like I wish it had some like this other feature. And one of the features that my very first laptop had or didn't didn't have, sorry, that. Uh, I wanted my new laptop to have was a number pad, like a dedicated number pad. Also, my first laptop, for whatever stupid reason, the microphone, you know what, on most laptops, the webcam and the microphone are both at the top of the screen. But for this laptop, the, the webcam was at the top of the screen, but the microphone was down near the keyboard. So it was a real pain in the ass when you're, you know, if you're streaming or calling with somebody or doing whatever, um, anytime you're like, you're like typing or like doing anything on the keyboard or using the mouse, when your 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 palm will like run across the microphone and it'll mess with it. It's just like whose idea, whose stupid idea was it to put the microphone down by the keyboard and not up by the webcam? Ooh, I love isn't always calibrated the best. I hope I'm not ambushed. Oh, thank god I'm not. I'm trying to think of some other things about my excuse me, about my old laptop 
like my first laptop that I that I really hated. The microphone was the huge thing. That was such a pain. Who does that? Who puts a microphone down there? That was a Samsung laptop too, my first one. And then my second one was uh, an HP. And I remember when I was I was looking around for for laptops. Ha! <laughs> nice. I got 420 doggles. I just noticed that. Um, I, I didn't want to get a gaming PC just then. I just wanted like a standard laptop that you know wasn't a piece of shit and you know had had the number pad and had the microphone near the webcam instead of down by the keyboard. And I I had found I had narrowed down like the. Um, like two laptops that uh that 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 I would choose between. Like one of them was a Lenovo and the other one was an HP. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to get an HP because I know that Catherine Catherine's first laptop was an HP and it was during the time when I guess there was this huge recall on HP computers because the batteries were overheating. I mean they fixed it, but um I don't know, something about Something about that just kind of scared me. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to have a computer that overheats. I mean, it was fine. If the computer didn't overheat. They they sorted out the issue. Um, <laughs> that was in midair. Um, but I, I was torn between a an HP and a, and a Lenovo, and I was I posted on Facebook to my friends like. Uh, like which guy like which computer do you guys think I should get this Lenovo or this HP like I've narrowed it down to these two ones and they both have features that I want and but I'm trying to decide on one and then my friend who is like really obsessed with like gaming computers and stuff was like oh you should get that you should get this uh, you know this alienware like overpriced gaming laptop thing I'm just like um, did I ask if I wanted that? I literally just gave you the two choices. Just pick one. It's just like, oh yeah, but the, this computer is better for the things that you want. I'm like, yeah, but I can't afford it. I just want a simple computer. I just want a simple computer that can do the things that I need to do without costing an arm and a leg. Oh yeah, I don't know much about the Galaxy phones exploding. I mean, the um, the first Galaxy phone that I ever had was an S series, so I never had like the cheap ones. The phone that I had before Samsung was an LG, and you know it was a cheap, simple phone, but it didn't have a whole lot of space on it. Time to turn on the lights. It's kind of dark in here. There we go. Also, I forgot that I have this energy drink. Um, I got like they had this uh, a bunch of free samples of things at uh, at work yesterday, and among which were uh, these energy drinks and takis. They had the nacho takis and these blue heat takis. I like the blue tea. The blue. <laughs> Blue teat. Uh, the blue heat takis because they're spicier than the nacho ones. This doesn't want to open. There we go. Cracked it. Crack open a cold one. This is lemon flavor. It's all right. The Note series phones. Yeah, might have been. It's always so confusing when tech companies name their stuff after actual ob like certain objects that exist in real life. Like um, those tablets that were called notebooks. I remember one time there was some sort of... <laughs> I think it was like some sort of promotional thing at my school. Like they had just opened an Amazon 
Amazon locker or like Amazon store thing at my university. And uh, it was like a, this coupon where if you came in, you got a free notebook. And my stupid ass thought that um, notebook meant the tablet. But when I went in there, imagine my surprise when I got a paper notebook. I'm just like, oh, this kind of notebook, okay. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, hey, they're not going to give away free tablets, but, you know. There's this one uh, BBC, this BBC uh, skit. I, I forget what show it was, and I'm not going to pull it up and play it because I know I'm going to get in trouble with BBC again, like I did last time, if I play it. But it, it, the, the, you can look it up on YouTube. It's called My Blackberry Is Not Working. And this guy comes into a, a grocery store. And he's like, yes, my Blackberry is not working. And he puts a little Blackberry, like an actual Blackberry on the counter. And they're making a bunch of these, whoops, I'm cursed. These fruit puns. It's like, oh, well, have, have you tried it on orange? Oh, uh, I did, but all it did was, or have you tried booting it? I, I did, but all it did was mess up windows. Well, I tried to put my dongle in it. And, uh, it won't fit. Oh, yeah. And just how big's your dongle? Well, I don't know much about these things, but my wife's seen a few dongles in her time. She says it's a little on the small side. It's a funny clip. But I can't show it, because BBC's gonna kick my ass. You know, I can't show it on stream, but there's nothing that's stopping me from posting the link in the chat. Here we go. There we go. Watch it your own. On your own time. <laughs> But I really like the dongle part. <laughs> a fishing line. A fishing link. Don't you dare accuse me of fishing. The only thing I fish for is Ganondorf. I dangle that fishing rod in front of his face and then he, he stares out like an idiot. Get over here. you a thick dead again while you're out there. I don't know. I don't know if my fishing line can handle the weight of a thick Ganon. Earlier today, Devin and I were talking about games that are broken but still enjoyable because he was talking about the new Pokemon game that like it's got problems but it's still a fun game and I haven't played it but I can relate to that in the sense that the Wii version of Twilight Princess is like that. Um, and I know I've explained this before, but uh, Twilight Princess was originally going to be released on the GameCube, but um, Nintendo wanted to uh, give people an excuse to buy the Wii, like it, to, to incentivize sales of the Wii, I should say. So um, they, uh, they halted, they, they um, they delayed the release of the GameCube version of Twilight Princess so that they could make the game compatible for the Wii as well, so that people want to, you know, get it on Wii. But the problem is, is that for GameCube, it was like, you know, a game that they had been working on for several years. So it was, it was nice. It was a good game. It was polished. But the Wii version was kind of churned out hurriedly, kind of quickly. And so there are certain glitches in Twilight Princess 
Excuse me. There are certain glitches in Twilight Princess that are pretty funny to exploit. And one of those is uh, the uh, Ganondorf fishing line glitch, where during the final battle, if you uh, if you dangle a fishing line in front of Ganondorf, he just stops fighting you and he just stares at it. He looks like a cat staring at a laser pointer. Yeah. I know that was part of our conversation too, but I mean, just kind of in, in the regards of, you know, a game having its problems but still being fun. But people who who just want to simp really hard for AAA publishers, especially Nintendo, they, uh, like, it's, it's like, it's sacrilege to, to, to criticize their precious Zelda game or their precious you know, Mario game in any way because it's perfect and Nintendo can do no wrong and how dare you say that Breath of the Wild was only a good game and not an excellent game. How dare you say that my favorite game was not perfect. By the way, if you if you say that Radia Stories is anything but perfect, you are not my friend anymore. Not really. I'm joking, of course. Like even Radia Stories is one of my favorite games. But oh, oh, oh my God, he was right in front of me. Did you see that? Jesus Christ, demon! At least take me to dinner first before you get that close. Um, like I said, I love Radial stories, but even this game has its issues. Like the lack of uh, save points and... And of course there's all that... That hidden content that was recently uncovered. It's just like, god dang it. Why didn't you leave that in? Or at least make it more accessible for... For fans to, to see. Like you could have it in a separate menu of like, yeah, this, like these are the deleted scenes. It's not part of the overall story, but if you want to watch them, you can. Because as much as I love um, the non-human path, it does feel very incomplete. And given the uh, the deleted cutscenes that we saw, it, it there was a lot, a lot, a lot that they cut out. I love these statues. If you can see up to the far left, there are, uh, there's a statue that uh, I believe is supposed to resemble the Elf King, and he looks a lot like Nogera slash Zane. I don't know if drinking this energy drink is gonna... This is, uh, 70... I don't know how strong this is, but let's see how much it wakes me up. Yeah, see, there's all these, like, statues. Oh, please don't bother me. There's one there, one there, one there. I also love these little murals that you can see on the wall behind them. And it would be easier to see if I was playing the the uh, the prototype version so I can adjust the camera, but they can't. Not here. 
Thank you for the hydrate. I know I've said this before, but I love the fact that this armor just randomly shows Jack's belly button. They didn't have to put that detail in there, but they decided that, uh, that, uh, we needed to see Jack's belly button. Yeah, you can see the, the murals here. It looks like the Elf King is, you know, creating wind, because Mikey did not mention that, uh, the Elf King could control natural phenomena. Such as make it rain one day and sunny the next. And so on and so forth. He could even make it windy if he wants to. He's the real weatherman. So these uh, these flower whites that you see um, are, are are very similar to the ones that you see in the city of flowers inside of houses. So that's a kind of interesting detail too. I have to wonder: are these flowers native to the area, or are, do they only show up wherever elves are living? Or, uh, elves plant them. Because they show up here and they show up in the City of Flowers, but nowhere else. How do these flowers live with no sun? I don't know, Devin. That's a good question. Oh, hello, Mr. Elf King. Now the... The demon is in that door, that big door over there, but uh, I want to go over here and uh, well, first I'm going to fight this guy and then I'm going to go find some treasures. Oops. Oopsies. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to order her to do this. You okay? I forget, but, um, don't these, once you, um, you send the Archdemon back to, you know, back to hell or wherever it came from, don't these, these little demons still persist in the, in the, uh, in the dungeon? Which is kind of weird. What? No, thank you. I... So, even though their their Mac Daddy is gone, they they still keep on reproducing somehow. Uh oh. Poor Mikey. Mikaya dude. Yeah. <laughs> 
They're their own people. They're sovereign people. They're sovereign citizens. <laughs> you know, sometimes... Not very often, but... Sometimes it's fun to watch, uh... Those, uh... Those cringy videos of the sovereign citizens who think that they're above the law because of some stupid archaic law that they think still applies to them. I remember one of my, uh, one of my co-workers who, uh, worked at a grocery store for her other job was telling me about, uh, um, you know, when, when masks were mandated and stuff. Uh, she had this one sovereign citizen coming to her into the store, you know, and you know, giving his excuse for not wearing a mask because I'm a sovereign citizen, blah, 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 blah. And it's always just so hilarious to see them, like, act so confident and, like, think that by telling, you know, the cop that, you know, oh, I actually, I'm a sovereign citizen, so, like, laws don't apply to me, that is going to stop the cop from arresting them, and then they get all surprised Pikachu face when, surprise, surprise, there are consequences for their actions. I think the armor is up here. Yep. Hidden behind a demon, but nonetheless. There's this one sovereign uh, sovereign citizen video where um, like this guy was uh, showing up at court for like I don't know some sort of like speeding ticket or something like something small like that, but you know he's being really um, really indignant about it. Yeah, there it is, the demon mail. Oops, wrong button. And. Uh, He's uh, trying to bring his, uh, there we go. I'm just gonna put it on temporarily. Just so I can show it off. Yeah, think deducting my health. Um, so he, he's um, trying to go into the courtroom with his camera, but the security guards aren't letting him go because you're not allowed to, at least in that state, you're not allowed to bring cameras into the courtroom. I think in most places you're not allowed to. And so they're like, you know, you gotta put the camera away or we're not gonna let you in. And he like kept trying to push through security and they're like, back off, back off, back off. And then finally they just take out the taser and tase him. I think like right before they do that, he's just like, you can't do anything. And they're like, <laughs> Fucking idiot. I'm a sovereign citizen. The articles of confederation say Save state. Just in case I die, you know. Those are really pretty crystals, though. All right, I'm going to get ready to, uh, to just. 
excuse me. I'm gonna army of shadows their crystal asses. Archdemon, Archdemon. Alright, let's do this. Army of Shadows. Beach. I love how, um, when he does his Volti, you can't see the Archdemon there, you just see the. Oh! We didn't even see his shadows. Oopsies. Lamadia. Or Maria, if you please. Yokai! I forget if Vermaria's healing spell. Oopsies. Uh, oopsies. Is able to uh, fix. Yeah, it does. It, it fixes uh, status ailments. Uh oh. Okay, you. I'm fine for now. Vermaria, you can heal. Ridley. time again. There we go. There's my shadows. Also, I like how um, my shadows, even though I'm wearing the demon mail, I, um, the shadows are in the shape of uh, Jack and his handmade tunic. I don't know if you noticed that. Clothes under his armor. That makes sense. Ooh, owie. That did not look like it felt good. Nope, not really. Uh, Romaria. I was getting the R names mixed up. We only have three-ish more crystals to go. I'm doing fine. This is fine. Yes. It's like in Wind Waker, where um, apparently Link is wearing his pajamas underneath his regular clothes. Because when you do the New Game Plus, Link is supposed to be wearing invisible clothing, but obviously they can't make Link naked or have him running around in his underwear. Yes. So instead you just have him running around in his pajamas. Get. 
all these uh <laughs> got uh Jack in his uh handmade tunic. And he's dead. Why the fuck didn't you warn me about that? Doesn't even look like there's writing on it, it's just a picture. But sometime, somehow, he knows that there's a story here. Talking about the, uh... Love letter. Rabud Reta. That's what that says. I didn't even have to use Google Trends. I'm just like, wait, Rabu Reta. Oh, love letter. Romaji. Not Romaji, uh. Katakan is weird. Oh, I guess there's text on the on the epitaph. We've got little uh, mini or not minions, uh, followers there, and then we've got the elf king. I believe that's the elf king there, and uh, some text, some illegible text. The thing I don't like about this castle is that I mean it kind of. Same goes for a lot of uh, dungeons that are supposed to be set in some sort of castle or like a place that people supposedly live, is that it doesn't look like, it doesn't have that lived in look. I'm very aware that I'm in a dungeon. I wonder what's down here, I forget. Oh, I think it's like, it takes you to Sept or Septum Cave, right? Yeah. Um, going into the basement of Alcatraz Castle. Yeah, like where's the kitchen, the bedroom, and the fancy hookah food? The fancy hookah room. I'll give credit to Twilight Princess in that um, they at least tried to make. Because like when you when you go into well, Hyrule Castle still looks like a dungeon, but um, Snow Peak Ruins they at least try to make they try to make it look like someone's house like because they put furniture in there and stuff like that i mean it still looks like a still looks like a like a dungeon but 
They did put furniture, so at least they tried. I would have liked to see what- I I'd like to see a reimagination of Algandar's castle. I'd like to see what Algandar's castle looked like in its heyday when it was actually inhabited by the king and his wife. And, you know, had servants and people coming in and out, having audiences with the king. Wrong way, Jack. How did God and Gandas. Let's get the fuck out of here. I don't know why these demons are still here. Because their Mac Daddy's gone. But I don't care. I'm leaving. I'm I'm getting out of this joint. And I'm... And I'm taking... I'm taking my save state with me. back to Fort Valencia and um, I think the ore mission is next I'm not really sure we'll, f we'll find out go away yeah. I don't want to bother with you Fighting you, aren't I? I'm trying to do two things at once. I'm trying to play the game and look up the strategy guide. Just to kind of point me in the right direction. Oh, yeah, we've got okay next is goblin cemetery and then the shining or shiny ore back to goblin cemetery to Radiata into humanity. Okay, so if, if humanity wait no, okay, so if man if humankind is mankind, then is humanity manity? 
humans are just manatees. Not Man is manatee. Humans are manatees, they're just big water cows. <laughs> I love animals that um, are like land animals, or like they remind you of certain land animals, but they live in the water, or like they remind you of certain land animals that, um, but they just fly anyway. Like um, flying fox bats, they're like uh, they're sky puppies, or um, seals, which are just uh, water water doggos. Humans are manatees confirmed. Gorillas are tree humans. What's the equivalent of sky humans? Well, I guess slidos, I suppose. Otters are water cats, yes. Evan. What are sky cats? What would they be considered? Okay. I see how it is. aren't very cat-like. Yeah, I guess that's true. You know, speaking of cats and people that remind you of certain animals, one of my old friends said that that Zane reminded them of a cat. And at first I didn't... Sorry, I spat when I said that. At first I didn't see it, but now I kind of do see it. I could see him as a very kind of cranky and territorial cat. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> You know when, um, when cats get very nervous that you're encroaching on their, then when either you or another cat is encroaching on their territory, they make that <laughs> noise. Imagine, <laughs> imagine Zane doing that. Genius. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> <laughs> comes to the city of flowers <laughs> and Zane just goes la, 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 la. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny I love it when cats make that oh, la, 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 la. so funny The Nigel Thornberry. <laughs> yeah, I got a, a pendant of some sort. I bet it belonged to the elf queen, or the, the human queen. <laughs> oh god, now I can't stop thinking about Zane going, oh, la, 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 la. You're in his territory. He's uncomfortable. <laughs> All right, it's time to go to the, go the uh, Goblin Cemetery. The Goblin Cemetery. But first, I want to save. Now, 
Aua. Where is it? Who should I choose? I'm gonna put. Uh, should I try fighting Gil? Because I think if I um if I defeat him in battle, he will join me. And he is a pretty pretty decent ally. It's just he's so hard to fight. So hard to fight in first. Get it right the first time. Hmm. Yeah. All right. We got a deal. Uh. Is it worth it? We'll find out. No shadows for me. <laughs> yeah. You don't like that, do you, Gil? I don't care. I'm gonna kill you if it's the last thing I fucking do. Oh, okay, easy enough. He's my friend now. I should buy more uh, herb extract from Marsha, though. That was worth it, I'd say. I think he does like it. Ah, uh, yes. Shadow clone jutsu me more, daddy. And Jack's like, will you write a poem about me? Can you draw me for free? Sarai Gob. I have a new friend now. He's my new buddy. Get, go, get, go in there. Actually, maybe I should swap out. I'm gonna sell all my smaller herb extract and then buy some nicer Stronger herb extract. Sure, it's pricey, but you know. Just a little more pricey. Anyway, save and then Goblin Cemetery. I got my gill. gone over to the Sidiche region, if you don't let me. Sidiche. I think if you completed the uh, Goblin Cemetery mission the first time, here we go. Jack's just like, yeah, I already know the password to get in. He's like, what? How do you know that? Um, Ningen? Yeah, 
a human. You know, it's interesting that um, uh, Marcus, I think it's Marcus or Marco, whatever. Um, he he uses the uh, kanji version of Ningen, even though he's a non-human, and humans are not part of his in-group. But he's referring to humans as if he is part of their group, which is interesting. Because I wonder if it's just a thing that elves do, which is like, they want to emphasize how not human they are. I don't know. That's just my interpretation of it. Like, the goblin's like, yeah, we know that you're not. That we're not one of you. We don't need to say it. There's, there's two, way to, two ways to say human. There's... There's Ningen, and then there's Ningen. Which is the way Zane says it. This they emphasize so hard that they manifest in kanji vocally. Don't don't you mean in katakana? Because katakana is the is um is what you use to indicate that something is part of the outgroup, right? Yeah. And also katakana, I feel like it puts more like. It's like harder. It's it's like more like more emphasis and just like I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a very like rough writing style. You don't understand Japanese. Okay, fair enough, Devin. Devin. Don't you mean weed trash, Devin? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, is there a right or wrong answer? Yeah. What the first one says undertake and the other one says categorically no. Yes, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do the thing. Goblin Cemetery because we already got the uh, the uh, recruitment outfit. I should have worn. Oh god damn! I should have worn the recruitment outfit while I was um I was while I was talking to him. That would have added more uh, more salt to the wounds. It's just like yeah, I've already been in your graveyard and I stole your treasure, but I didn't. Mm. Oh, well. I guess there's other opportunities to do it. Anyway, um, I'm gonna switch back to my stupid little- actually, you know what? Switch back. Oh, hey, look at me! I'm wearing your outfit. I don't need to buy anything.
All right, so I pretty much just have to go straight back to the uh, Goblin Cemetery, which is over there. Goblin Hakaba. Any doggle tours for me? Nope. Here in the jungle. Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. Left. Left then right. Ah, oh, the karma chameleon. It's got me. Get out of my way, Gil. You're trying to steal my kill, Gil. I like how when it when it becomes camouflage, you're more likely to miss it. It's kind of an interesting feature. opportunity to grind more. I'll go back and fight those guys. My nose is like really stuffy for some reason. so much. <laughs> well, ghost demon. Is this what gob goblins look like after they die? They just turn into these, like, tall, grim reaper looking things. It would be cool if you, um, if the graveyard of the elves, not not the Goblin Cemetery, but the graveyard of the elves was a place that you could visit. I mean, like, there is a map for it. You know, like, when the, the cutscene where, where Zane visits Nogera's grave, like, it's it exists, but you're not able to access it by normal means. Um, oh yeah, they also have skeletons, but... They have some of these weird grand Reaper looking things, but um, anyway, as I was saying, I wish that the uh, Graveyard of the Elf was a place that you could, like, access, like, the Goblin Cemetery, and that there is, like, just, like, a proper dungeon, and that, um, I don't know, like, there, there are these, uh, mossy elf skeletons that just come out of the, uh, out of cocoons in random places. 
and they chase after you and they try to kill you. And they go, ooh, human. Algandars. I want to fight no garbage ghost. His dead mossy ghost. into a fucking hedgehog of all things. I don't even know what those are supposed to be. Are those hedgehogs? Well, hedgehog gotta go fast. You know, I haven't seen very many of those goblin skeletons lately. I I've just been seeing those uh, Grim Reapers. You think so that they're hedgehogs? Oh, there they are. Hello, little skeleton. Little guy. That goblin is dick sucking height. I feel like it's appropriate that I wear uh, a suit and tie to a, to a cemetery. You gotta look your best. You gotta look, uh. You gotta be respectful. When you're visiting the graves of dead, dead goblins. I should be getting relatively close to Gobblehood tonight. Insist.
doing pretty good. Doing pretty good for ourselves. I'll fight the enemies in this room and, uh, just for the sake of grinding. I really wish I knew the difference between these, um, like, these things and the, uh, the goblin skeletons that are coming out of the ground. Because obviously the goblin skeletons are dead goblins, but... I don't know, what are these things? Oh no, I'm ambushed. Oh, or maybe not. That was a pleasant surprise. damage here. Okay, now we're getting close. And I know that because the hallway is getting wider. That's the only reason why I know that. Dead goblins, double dead. Yes, Alright, just take me to Gobble Hope the Ninth. Gobble Hope, whatever Roman numeral. Here he is again. Here I am, once again. Gobble Hope the Ninth. I forget what that kanji means. It's like, uh... Oh! Oh, that actually makes sense! Um, so in the English version, his name is Gobble Hope the Ninth, but in the Japanese version, his name is Gobble Hotep, and he looks very ancient Egyptian looking. So that's actually kind of interesting, now that I think about it. Gobble Hotep. So Hotep is, um... The ancient Egyptian, or one of the ancient Egyptian gods. That's very interesting. I didn't, didn't really occur to me in, at first. That's cool. I'm just gonna order everybody to only attack him. Just focus on him. Don't worry about his minions. his ass guys get his ass We actually killed him pretty quickly. I 
that's interesting. He went down quicker than the Archdemon did. Not that I'm complaining. Get off of me, both of you. They also like to latch on as well. Get out of here. Please let me pass unhindered. Because a lot of these enemies aren't really even worth it for the experience. They really don't. They don't give a whole lot. Because I've already been here. I've already been here, so um, these enemies are more suitable for you know a lower level. I mean, I guess they're not terrible. I mean, they're worth like over a thousand, so it's not. It's pretty. It's a pretty decent. But I want something more powerful if I can get it. Sorry, at first I thought that that was, um, I thought Devin was doing the sound effect, but that was really just Gil making his usual noises. <laughs> usual in-battle noises. Ridley's cursed. She looks so disappointed. I wish we could replace in-game voices with just ye. Like in Radia stories or in uh, Radia stories or Final Fantasy X or just all games in general.
No. Well, I avoided that chameleon back there. Okay. I got caught by that one. Make a, um, <laughs> a, uh, Final Fantasy X mod where, uh, where every line is just, yee Do yee-haw. Here we go! Yeah, here we go! Excuse me. Imagine if if chameleons in real life were that big. I would be terrified. I would shit my pants. It's just like a chameleon that size and it just sticks its tongue out at you. go back and talk to Marcus, or Marco as he's called. Oh, wolf. We get a scene of him um, talking to Marcus in his uh, recruitment outfit. <laughs> you humans like. You like them toggles, don't you? You see, Marcus knows the proper um, compensation for uh, a human's time and resources. Zane doesn't. Zane thinks that uh, Saints trophies will will solve all things. He's like, well, I suppose you should be paid for your time, but, and I know I have doggles technically in my inventory, but I'm not going to give you any, because even though I think that doggles are a stupid human concept, 
I'm not willing to part with any doggles that I own, and I'm just gonna settle for a for a Saint's trophy. He knows he just chooses not to. Well, that's the thing. Saint doesn't give a shit. It's time for my belly button. It's belly button time. Here we go. Another cutscene. He looks so sad. You can see, almost see the tears in his eyes. You got this happy elf region music playing. But he's about to tell you a very sad story. Look at him, he's gonna cry. He's gonna make me cry. So baby. I think I still have that picture of uh of uh of him like with his eyes photoshopped onto uh that sad cat. Where is it? Crying David. Well, I have two two different ones. I have um, I have this one. I'll show it after I uh, Oops. Uh. No. That was the, uh, that was something else. Not what I wanted to show you. David. Such a sad man. Yes, let's take over. Let's refuse. I'll do it. I'll do it for you, sad David. So what I was going to show you before was, uh, so we got this thing, whoops, there's Sad Cat David, and then we got, uh, whoops, 
I'm gonna do pick one. I'm going to do uh, pick two. Crying David. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, yeah. He's so sad. Just trying to get rid of this stupid shit. Put in the right orientation. So I have to go to, uh, to Earth Valley, I believe. Go to a tongue. Even though the humans took it over, um, they're, they're not actually inhabiting Earth Valley for some reason. Get where, uh, which tunnel I have to go to? Because like, there, I know that there's two entrances. One of them. Oh shit. Okay. Gotcha. I have to go over here. This is something that always trips you up because um, when you have to do the uh, what's it called the. Uh, the uh the earth digger or the rock digger mission i always end up going through this tunnel when i'm supposed to go through the other one and it always sort of trips me up Not even worth my time. Never is. Goes down in like one fell swoop of my sword. The rats are calling for backup. I remember when I was playing the uh, the White Elf mod that James made, and uh, I used to get stuck in the elevator shaft when I'd play as Zane. Because for some reason Zane doesn't know how to uh Zane doesn't know how to get out of the elevator shaft. Or no gear for that matter. I forget where I'm supposed to go. I'm gonna die in the elf tunnel or the not the elf tunnels, the dwarf tunnels. He's too big for the elevator. Yeah. Poor Zane. Getting himself stuck in the elevator. Yeah. <laughs> 
Wasn't back there, so I have to turn back, go the other way. Gotta sweep this entire mine until until we find uh, the ore that we need. I guess you could say I'm a mine sweeper. This one able to rat. I feel like these little rat things are, along with like other, uh, stop it, put it away, there we go, are um, like the worst enemies because they don't give much experience. They don't give much experience and um, they're just very, very tedious. So small, somebody you can't even hit them. Not even worth my time. hope that the uh, the ore that we need is down here the shiny ore I need that earth cell get out of my way This is um this is some pretty boring shit. What are you eating for dinner tonight, Devin? Or anyone else he was watching? That's sort of my go-to discussion question when there's not a whole lot going on in the game. I haven't had dinner yet. I have some sticks, Mary. Oh, here we go. I think this is the way. You had checks mix. Very good. Can you please get out of my way, Mouse? Mouse, oh my god! Get the fuck out of my way! Shit! Get me, get! Stupid piece of shit. Piece of shit, Mouse. <laughs> I didn't want to fight you, but she made me, or just wouldn't get out of my way. Stopped by rats. I think it was a mouse. I think this is it. Yes. Cutscene.
Alright, here we go, Earthcell. Show me what you got. Hit me with your best shot. Wow, that went down pretty easy. Man. Oh, the places you can go when you're properly leveled up. Oh, I- Oh, I got the, um, I got that X, that Earth X. Whatever it's called. And I got the ore. I'm gonna try out the X. Rock X. Yeah, 92 damage. Yeah, boy. Get. Are you seriously going to block my way again? Fuck you, mouse. I need a new, uh... Yeah, I can only do two attacks anyway. that I need to get for the axe is uh it's uh, radial smash or however it's translated into Japanese Rat. I thought I smelled a rat. It looks like an albino rat. Me and Ridley are axe twins now. She's got a fire axe, and I've got uh, um, an earth axe. And I learned another attack, so I can add that to my combo list. Okay, fine, just kill all the enemies for me. Why not? It's not like I need experience. I mean, it doesn't matter. We all get the experience. So. I'm just being petty. No, I don't want to bother with you right now. Thank you very much. Time to uh, go into the elevator and not get stuck in the shaft. I don't want to get shafted in this elevator shaft.
Now we to talk to David. David? What is this, David? Oh. David, yes. What is this, David? I almost forgot about that. David. Let's go. Oh, you got my ore. I got another weapon. It's a spear, though. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see, what, have a look at the weapon that he gave us. Uh, not, not that one. Uh, this one. Uh, not too bad. I still want to stick to my axe for right now, though. It's a good axe. It's a very good axe. be all for tonight since uh what we have coming up i'm gonna say for the next stream it's gonna be the defending parsec mission this is that's pretty much all for um this week's gaming streams tomorrow will um is when i will release the uh the schedule for next week we'll have movie night on monday as we usually do and then our next Radia story stream, sorry, <clears throat> is going to be, it's actually not going to be on Friday, like it has been the last two weeks. It's going to be on Tuesday, June 13th, sorry, I was about to say 30, 30th. Um, June 13th is going to be the next Radia story stream. And um, I think we can just kind of call it without doing a raid tonight because it's just it's kind of a quiet night and we'll just kind of leave it where it is no no shining raid tonight um that put aside humans and fellow fairy creatures i will see you on monday for movie night and if not then i'll see you on tuesday next tuesday for more radio stories Take care.